Moscovites brought to you from Don Bosco Youth Services. Episode 1, Part 9. A sincere but disobedient boy. Don Bosco meets John Caliero. The very first impression Don Bosco made on me was that of an outstanding priest, a fact endorsed by the kindly way he received me, as well as by the honor and respect shown him by my parish priest, my teachers and the other priest. This was an impression that stayed with me. It was never erased. This is what John Caliero would say about his first encounter with Don Bosco. The meeting took place between Don Bosco and the young John Caliero in 1850. He was 12 years old from Castel Nuovo di Asti. The priest of his place had introduced him to Don Bosco, who asked him about his vocation and then accepted him in the oratory. This is his story. At the beginning of October, Don Bosco reached the village of Becky for the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And John Caliero, a lively but good boy, arrived there too. He had come there with his good parish priest, Father Cinzano. The lad had only heard good things about Don Bosco. I always heard praises being showered on Don Bosco. My fellow villagers and especially my mother, my relatives and friends kept telling me about this saintly man that they had sensed something extraordinary about Don Bosco. Even as a young boy in Becky, Don Bosco, the little Johnny Bosco as he was called, was loved by his companions. In the autumn of 1851, little John was accepted at the oratory of Don Bosco. John Caliero was an orphan who had lost his father a few days earlier. On the 1st of November that year, Don Bosco had left Turin for Castel Nuovo di Asti to preach there for the Feast of the All Souls. He wanted to be as near as possible to Don Bosco. And so as soon as he arrived at the sacristy, Johnny, John Caliero was there already before the service began. He wanted to serve as an altar boy to accompany the preacher to the pulpit and in fact it happened. When the sermon was over, Don Bosco came to the sacristy and very kindly turned to Caliero. I think you want to tell me something very important, don't you? Yes, replied the boy, his face blushing fiercely. I want to tell you something that I've been thinking about for a long time. I want to come to Turin to be with you and to study and to become a priest. Very well, you can come along, Don Bosco said. The pastor has already spoken about you. Tell your mother to come to the rectory with you this evening and we'll settle the matter. As the church bells slowly and mournfully invited the faithful to pray sorrowfully for the dead, John Caliero and his mother knocked at the rectory. My good Teresa, Don Bosco greeted her jokingly. You've just come in time. I was expecting you. Let's talk business. Is it true that you want to sell me your son? Sell him? Good heavens, no, she exclaimed, but I'm willing to give him to you if it's all right with you. That's even better, replied Don Bosco. Bundle your things and we leave tomorrow. I'll take him with me and I'll be a father to him. The next morning at dawn, John Caliero was ready at the sacristy, ready to serve Don Bosco's mass. It was obvious that from the very beginning that he was a boy full of life. Don Bosco's trip from Castel Novo to Turin, about 15 miles, was usually made on foot. 
And so when it was time to go, Don Bosco turned to him and said, Well, shall we go? Yes, let's go. What about your mother? She's glad I'm with you. And so they set out. At times Caliero walked at Don Bosco's side, at other times he ran ahead or sometimes lingered behind to pluck fruits from the hedges. And then he would race and overtake and jump over hedges. He would jump over ditches and run through the fields. From time to time Don Bosco would question him and the boy's replies revealed an admirable character. They covered the present, the past, the future. They talked about things he had done at home and confided his most intimate secrets. He was so candid that Don Bosco declared that he had come to know him so thoroughly within the space of the few hours that if it had been a sacramental confession, he would only have to give him an absolution. John Caliero recalled this 15 mile trip together with Don Bosco with these words. Don Bosco talked to me about nothing else but God and the Blessed Mother and he inquired about other spiritual matters. Every now and then laughing he would urge me to be a good boy. Finally after the long journey we reached Turin. I shall always fondly remember the moment I arrived at the oratory on the evening of November 2nd, 1851. Don Bosco introduced me to his mother saying, Mama, here is a small boy from Castel Nuovo. He wants to become really good and go to school. Mama Margaret replied, You always bring in boys when you know very well that we have no room. Oh, you'll find a little corner for him, replied Don Bosco. He's so small, he can sleep in the bread basket. Or we can hoist him up on a beam, just like a bird cage. Caliero went on, laughing at the remark, Mama Margaret left the room to find a place for me. That night, another boy and I slept at the foot of Don Bosco's bed. The next morning I saw how poor this dwelling was. Don Bosco's room was quite small with a low ceiling and our dormitories on the main floor were narrow, paved with cobblestones. Straw mattresses, sheets and blankets were the only furnishing. The kitchen was miserably equipped. In the place of china and silverware we had only few tin bowls and spoons. Forks and knives and napkins made their appearance only many, many, many years later when some benefactor provided them for us. Poverty, sacrifice, difficulty. But what was it that convinced the boys to stay with Don Bosco? What prevented them from running away from the oratory? Don Bosco was actually waiting for us tidying up our dormitory, mending and cleaning our clothes, performing other services for our benefit. Caliero recounts he shared our life and made us feel that this was not just a boarding school, but truly a family. A family cared for by a tender, loving father whose only concern was our spiritual and material well-being. He loved to be just one of us. For him, the salvation of souls was the only thing that really mattered. If he noticed that some boy had slipped spiritually, he would take pains to approach him and whisper a good word. And then he would assign someone to keep an eye on him so as to lead him back to the path on to the path of virtue. Meanwhile, John Caliero began his Latin classes. He progressed well. He had a fine aptitude and a very cheerful disposition. He was always outstanding in competitive games, a champion, a leader, full of initiative. At first, it seemed impossible to curb his fiery temperament. On his way to school especially, he would not bring himself to walk along with the others. As soon as the gates of the oratory were open, Caliero would run past the gate on 
to the city square to see the Charlestons doing tricks. Yet, when his classmates got to the professor's doorstep, Kalioro, drenched in perspiration, would already be there. Don Rua, who was in charge of the group, would invariably ask him, but why can't you walk with us? Because I like it better my way. What's wrong with the girl? What's wrong with going one way instead of another? Asked Kalero. How about obedience? Responded Rua. Obedience? I'm never late. I'm even ahead of you. I do my homework and I always know my lessons. So why all the fuss? Nevertheless, this rebellious behavior was replaced slowly by obedience and Don Bosco absolutely did not want to send him away. He appreciated his sincerity. The following year, however, Don Bosco spoke to Caliero about the virtue of obedience. Thereafter, the boy became more amiable and an example to all. Eleven years after that first encounter, 1862, Caliero is ordained a priest and appointed as the spiritual director of the oratory of Waldoko. Eleven years later, 1873, he graduated in theology from the University of Turin. Two years later, 1875, the first Salesian missionary expedition to South America took place. And it is important to remember that at the head of this first Salesian missionary expedition, Don Bosco appointed John Caliero. Two years later, he was called back to Turin to be the spiritual director of the congregation. In 1884, Pope Leo XIII nominated him as titular bishop of Magida in Argentina. In 1915, Pope Benedict XV raised him to the dignity of a cardinal. In 30 years, Monsignor Caliero started 14 parishes, 15 churches, 8 colleges, 6 day schools, a school of art and craft, 3 agricultural schools, 8 kindergartens, 2 hospitals, and surprisingly, 5 meteorological observatories. The civic authorities of Argentina called him the reformer of the Patagonia. He was urged by the strong and persuasive example of Don Bosco and he strove to imitate him. During the 35 years I lived by his side, John Cardinal Caliero declared, I never detected any sign of distrust in him, no misgivings as to God's goodness and mercy towards him. He spoke of heaven with such fervor, relish and profound feeling as to enchant all his listeners. Let's go back, let's go back to that beautiful conversation in the sacristy on that feast of all souls. Don Bosco and the young John Caliero who was there to be at his side to serve his mass. He wanted to go to the oratory, he wanted to study, he wanted to become a priest. But on the flip side, he was so energetic, he was so full of energy, he could not stay along with his group. He escaped, he ran, he joined, he saw other things. But when it came to his class, he was there ahead of time. Obedience was difficult. But Don Bosco slowly educated him on the beautiful virtue of obedience. Don Bosco was able to channel his energy and make of him a wonderful priest, a wonderful missionary, a wonderful leader of the first expedition. He not only became the congregation's first bishop, he became also the congregation's first cardinal. He was a great musician and all this he learned at the feet of Don Bosco. He was so small that he could have been kept into a bread basket. But look at the way he grew to become a man of such high valor. 
a great contribution to the society, the Salesian congregation, contribution to the church and to South America. My dear, my dear past pupils, my dear cooperators, my dear Salesians, members of the Salesian family, young people, there is so much potential in each one of us, so much potential. But it needs to be challenged, it needs to be channeled and our, our physical energy must be in tune with also our spiritual energy. And this is what Don Bosco did. Don Bosco catered to his spiritual and his material needs. And putting these together, wow, what a happy blend, what a happy life, what a happy transformation. We pray for this grace that you and I, like Don Bosco, looking at the young people of today, may be able to blend the material and the spiritual, to challenge them to be good citizens and God-fearing people. Both these have to go together. God bless you.